the Lord with a voice of triumph for the Lord our God is a great and awesome God we gathered here this morning to worship and praise the Lord and truly our testimony and witness is that the Lord is good how many of you believe that this morning that the Lord is so good we welcome you this morning to our worship and we invite you to worship and praise God with us and we are anticipating God moving mightily in our midst today God bless you this morning, and welcome to worship. Good morning. I'll be reading. Good morning. I'll be reading Psalms 95 verses 1 through 7. King James Version. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with, with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is a great Lord and a great King above all gods. In his hands are are the deep places of earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it. Yeah. And his hands formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us 
Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Amen. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hands. Today you will hear his voice. Amen. Good morning, New Hope. Good morning. Let's bow our heads. We thank you for the amazing, beautiful world you created. Help us care for it. We thank you for the wonderful, unique people you have made us to be. Help us care for one another. Jesus, you are good and wise. We will praise you when we rise. Jesus, hear this prayer. I sin, rest my family and my friends. Jesus, help our feet to go in the way that you will show. Jesus, help our hands to do all the loving, kind, and true. Jesus, guard us through this day. Pray for our city and our state and our country. Amen. Amen. Let's clap our hands and praise the Lord for our children this morning. Come on, we can do better than that. Come on, these are young people. It's not easy standing before a crowd. Amen. I get nervous every Sunday. Come on, clap your hands. I'll say yes. I'll say yes, Lord, to your will. Oh, I'll say yes. I will trust you. And when your spirit, with my whole heart, I will agree. And by answer will, Lord, yes. Come on, sing it like you mean it. I'll say yes to your will. Every day I'll say yes. I will trust you. And when your spirit with my whole heart, every day my answer will be yes. Oh, yeah. Come on, say it again. I'll say yes. Oh, I'll say yes. Every day is yes. To your will and to your will. I'll say yes. I will trust you. With my whole heart And my answer Is will still be yes Come on my soul says yes Every day is yes Oh yeah Oh yeah My soul says yes God, your yes. I'll say yes. I will trust you. And when your spirit with my whole heart, I will agree. And my answer. Yeah. My soul said yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah. My soul said every day is yeah. All day is yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Every day is yeah. Oh! 
it's good to know Jesus. And the joy of it is Jesus knows me. Amen. How many are grateful this morning to know the Lord? Amen. We are excited to have this opportunity to stand before you today. We thank God for Pastor Cyrus for giving uh, me this opportunity to share the word of God with you on this morning. If you would join me in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 2, uh, verses 17 through 26 will be our reading, um, but we will perhaps look at the entirety of that chapter. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verses 17 through 26. I'm reading from the message translation, so it's a paraphrase of the Holy Bible. It is not one that is used for study, but it is used uh, when it's accurate to help convey the meaning of the scripture in modern language. Here is how this reads in the message translation. Chapter 2, verses 17 through 26. I hate life. As far as I can see, what happens on earth is bad business. It's smoke and spitting into the wind. I hated everything I'd accomplished and accumulated on this earth. I can't take it with me. No, I have to leave it to whoever comes after me. Whether they're worthy or worthless. And who's to tell? They'll take over the earthly results of my intense thinking and hard work. Smoke. That's when I called it quits. Gave up on anything that could be hoped for on this earth. What's the point of working your fingers to the bone if you hand over what you work for to someone who never lifted a finger for it. Smoke. That's what it is. A bad business from start to finish. So what do you get from a life of hard labor, pain, and grief from dawn to dusk? Never a decent night's rest Nothing but smoke. The best you can do with your life is have a good time and get by the best you can. The way I see it, that's it. Divine fate. Whether we feast or fast is up to God. Verse 26. God may give wisdom and knowledge and joy to his favorites. But sinners are assigned a life of hard labor and end up turning their wages over to God's favorites. Nothing but smoke and spitting into the wind. Amen. You may be seated. I want to talk this morning for just a few minutes from the thought, you don't want this smoke. You don't want this smoke. These words in our text are the words of Solomon. These are the words of a king, a great king who had accumulated great wealth. In fact, the record and testimony of Solomon is that he is and was the wisest man to live other than Jesus Christ. Okay. And Solomon, this great sage of scripture, is giving us his perspective of life, and then in verse 26, he reaches a conclusion. And here's what Solomon teaches us in the book of Ecclesiastes. In fact, Ecclesiastes, even though it's in the Old Testament, it comes from a New Testament Greek word that means the preacher. And it is one who speaks to an assembly. And so in the text, Solomon 
is the voice of the preacher. He is giving us good wisdom about life. And then here is what he says. He says that most of us in our pursuit of happiness, we miss it big time because we chase smoke rather than fire. Come on Come on that is most of us because Ecclesiastes is part of the wisdom literature of scripture that teaches to how to seek true happiness. And most of us, if we're honest, we are miserable. We don't experience the type of happiness and joy that the Lord wants us to experience. And here is why. Because we attach our joy, our hope, our happiness, our peace to things. Yeah. Tell your neighbor things. And Solomon is well saying to us in the text that as long as your focus and emphasis on life is accomplishing and achieving and accumulating things, you will always be miserable. Right. Because he describes life in pursuit of those things without God as chasing nothing but smoke. Come on Shout to your neighbor, it's smoke. It's smoke. Now the interesting thing about Ecclesiastes is that it pictures life as a vapor or as smoke. But, but, but the thing about it that confuses so many people is that the things that he pursued, well most of the things he pursued, they are not in and of themselves bad. All right. They are, in some cases, in most cases, they are noble things to pursue. Come on but what Solomon cautions is that if you pursue these things at the stake of an intimate relationship with God, you will end up empty. Yeah. Shout empty. <laughs> this is powerful right here because he describes life as smoke. He describes the pursuit of life and material things as a source of happiness as nothing but smoke. Has anybody ever tried to grab a handful of smoke? You can try as many times as you will. And after you reach for it and close your hand and grip it tight, if you open it up, it is nothing there. All right. He says that's what most of us are like in our pursuit of life because we are chasing smoke. Somebody help me preach this morning and shout smoke. The reason that many of us cannot rejoice and the reason why many of us cannot feel complete, the reason why many of us have no meaning in life is because our lives have been spent pursuing things at the expense of our relationship with God. <laughs> I can see already this is going to be a tough one right here. <laughs> Because what Solomon wants us to see is that God is the source of peace. He is the source of joy. He is the source of fulfillment. He is the source of meaning. And if you pursue life and accomplish anything without him, it is nothing but smoke. And in this verse, he compares life and the accumulation of things to mere Smoke, And he teaches us some powerful lessons in the spiritual world by drawing on some spiritual applications. First thing we need to learn and recognize that smoke has some characteristics that we need to remember. First of all, smoke is diverse. Everybody say diverse. <laughs> Meaning there are all kind of chemicals in smoke. That, that, that if you did an analysis of smoke, you would discover that it is particles and residue of things that fire has consumed. Are you hearing me this morning? And what I'm trying to tell you is that your smoke may not be my smoke and their smoke might not be your smoke, but when we really be honest, all of us have a handful of smoke. Because <laughs> we've been pursuing these things at the expense of an intimate relationship 
with God. And Solomon's aim is to tell us these things are not all bad, but don't get life twisted. Don't get priorities mixed up. Don't think that just because you make these accomplishments that it's going to bring lasting peace and joy. Those things only last for a moment. He says it so clearly because you can spend all of your life working and striving and struggling. And then when you die, uh -oh. and how many of you know you're going to die? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You have to leave it all behind. Because what you accumulate on earth can't help when we stand before the Lord and the Lord makes us give an account of how we live the life he gave us, how we breathe the air he gave us, how, he, how we use the abilities he gave us, how we use the knowledge he gave us, how we spent the experience he gave us. None of the stuff we accumulate here is <laughs> going to matter. And Solomon says, you don't have to wait till you die to realize it don't matter. You can experience the nothingness of smoke even now. <laughs> Here's how. Because things that don't have a lasting effect on our lives, we have to find ways to keep doing those things. <laughs> Are you hearing me? If you find something that brings you good peace, I promise you, you're going to have to use it and do it again to get more peace. Yeah? <laughs> are, are you hearing me? And I wish we had time just to really dissect Solomon's life because Solomon tried a whole lot of stuff. And in all of his trying, he realized that the more I try, the more I have to chase smoke. Yeah, and somebody's got to make up your mind today that if you want the peace God wants you to have, if you want the job the joy that the Lord wants you to have. If you want to have the happiness that's available to you, you've got to recognize, you've got to let the smoke go and really chase the fire. Shout to your neighbor, we got to chase fire. <laughs> Here's what he says. Not only is smoke diverse, but he teaches us something about smoke, and that is smoke diffuses. Right. That once you allow your priorities to get shifted in one area of life. Help me preach this. It spreads to other areas of life. You can develop some habits in one area of life and it will carry over. I'm teaching and y'all ain't acting like it. It will carry over into other areas of your life. I wish I had about three witnesses that would testify that some things you started, they have trickled down into other areas of life. And if we're honest, we can admit our life is a mess and we're feeling empty because we're chasing smoke. <laughs> smoke diffuses here. Here's one thing I learned that, that when someone smokes, they are a primary smoker. So they get the residue primarily from what they are smoking. But then there's something else that's called secondary smoke. All right now. Secondary smoke, you don't have the joint. I mean, you don't have the cigarette in your mouth, but you're around somebody that does. You, uh, uh, I know you too saved to admit it today, but you remember back in the day, you used to take a charge, and I'm not talking about the one on the basketball court. I'm talking about the one that, that the person has the joint in their head that they're smoking, and rather than breathing in, they just push a little bit of it out, and you're right there waiting to exhale. I'm talking to somebody this morning. That's called secondary. That's right. And then, do you not know there's something called tertiary smoke? Uh -oh, uh -oh. This is the smoke that gets into the walls. And so sometimes your life can be contaminated just by being in the presence and the environment of some people who are smoking. And that's why you got to be careful, brothers and sisters, who you let feed you knowledge, who you let drop education in you, because you might be letting people blow you smoke. I'm preaching and y'all ain't acting like it. Yeah. 
smoke diffuses, it, it gets on other people. And we've been around people uh, that have been engaged in smoking and we can smell it. Tell your neighbor, it's all over them. When they walk into the room, you know it. You can smell it. And Lord, heaven forbid you done had an encounter with it yourself. You sure enough can recognize it. Oh, maybe we've gotten too holy and sanctimonious that we forgot how we used to live back in the gap. And then he just says, we learned something else about smoke. You ready for this? Yeah. Smoke is dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, tell your neighbor, it's dangerous. Do you not know that most people who die in fires don't actually die from the flame, they die from ingesting too much smoke. And I'm trying to tell somebody today, maybe that's why your joy is dead because you've been inhaling too much smoke. Maybe that's why you don't have peace in your life because you've let other people blow smoke in your nose and in your ear. Maybe you can't shout anymore because you've been hanging around so many people whose lives are contaminated by smoke. But I want to really reach the hearts of people today who have made up their mind. I don't want the smoke, I want the fire. I don't want to have a peace that can leave me when I'm in the storm. I want some peace that is everlasting. So here's what Solomon says to us. He says, smoke, shout smoke. It can be deceptive. It can be deceptive. And he mentions to us several things that deceived him in his pursuit of happiness and his pursuit of the real meaning of life. And in all of his wisdom, Solomon got tricked. Uh oh. Come on with it. Now, wait, let me just make this clear. If the wisest man other than Jesus can be fooled, don't be a fool and think you can't be fooled. Because sometimes there's something appealing about smoke. Ask me how I know. Because we could be riding home, minding our own business, look up in the sky and see smoke. And guess what we do? We're going to find out I wonder what done happened. We ought to ride by so we can see where the smoke and what has happened to so many of us is we've looked at people and other people and how they live and we've been attracted to their smoke. And so we want some of that smoke because we've been looking at other people so long and so much that we have made ourselves unhappy with the life God has given us. Solomon is pleading with his readers of Ecclesiastes. He's saying, if you would just hear my wisdom, you can leave chasing smoke and you can capture and find and discover the real meaning of life. Because he says in chapter 2, verse 1, I said to myself, let's go for it. <laughs> He's in the pursuit of life and he says, let's go for it. Tell your neighbor, let's go for it. <laughs> he is talking to himself. <laughs> and the reason he's on a plight in chapter 2 is because he talked to himself. Yes. Yes. Oh my goodness. It's dangerous when we talk to ourselves. Yes. Especially, tell your neighbor, especially when you say the wrong things to yourself. Woo. If you're going to do self-talk, you ought to at least talk to yourself from the things God said in his word and not just from yourself. Ask me why. Because where do you think all the crazy decisions came that you made? Where did they come from? Where did they come from? 
You at your house by yourself. Ain't nobody around. You ain't talking to nobody, ain't texting to nobody, and all of a sudden, uh -huh. you get some crazy thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. Where did they come from? Come on with it. You! Yeah. Well, in my case, me. Sometimes the last person that needs to talk to us Because some of us have said some crazy stuff to ourselves. What? Some of us have talked ourselves out of opportunities and open doors that God has set before us. God has opened doors for you and we have talked ourselves out of walking through the door. I don't know what's going to happen. I ain't never seen a door that big before. Maybe if I go look at what I got to leave. You talking about scared of leaving little doors because you don't afraid to walk through big doors. Sometimes we're in the predicament we're in because we talk to our priest. There are several things. Let me hurry through this. First thing that Solomon teaches, he says that just getting all the good education you want ain't going to satisfy you. Now, here's the question. Is education good? <laughs> but if you get education without God, you just get pseudo-intelligence. Are you hearing me? What, what I mean by pseudo-intelligent is you would think you smarter than you really All right now. Yes, All right. He says education is fine, but you can't put your life's hope and fulfillment in getting an education. Ask me how I know. Because how many people have gone back to school after you got the first degree? All right. All right. Right? That's true. <laughs> Right? It, right? I mean, look, 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 you say, look, when I get my bachelor's, I'm going to leave it up. I'm going to be stomping with the big dogs. And then we graduate and can't get a job in the major we majored in. And then we got to end up doing something we never thought we would do with a whole degree. And then we say to ourselves, I need to go. And then we go back to school, and now we're too qualified to get some jobs. What? The education didn't solve the problem. It just made you more intelligent. I'm teaching and y'all ain't acting like it. Educating and education is good, but it's not the source of your hope and your dreams and your purpose. And then when you do get the masters, somebody got to tell you, now you got to pursue the master plus 30. Then you got to go and get the, the doctorate. And then when you get the doctorate, you still gonna feel like you're not making the money you wish you should have made. And now you know what you mean? You just one mad PhD. What? Yeah, I done went and spent all this time in school and they wanna pay me this? Come on now. Tell your neighbor, it's good to get an education. But don't get so intelligent, you forget about God. Because there are some doors, I'm about to shout on this, that God can open, that 10 degrees came. There, there are some ways that God can figure out, that all the knowledge in this world can't figure out. There are some ways that God can make that you can't figure out with all your intelligence. God can open up some doors that people have closed in your face. God can shut some doors that no man can open. I'm telling you, you can't live without God. Smoke! Then, 
Here's what he says. He says, then I tried pleasure. Uh-huh. Oh, Lord. That's the word. Here's what he says. He says, I reached the point in my life I decided after talking to myself that I ain't going to say no to me. That I will not deny myself. He said it. Look at verses 1, 2, and 3. Experiment with pleasure. Have a good time. But there was nothing to it. Nothing but smoke. What do I think of the fun field life? It's insane. It's insane. My verdict on the pursuit of happiness. Who needs it? All right now. He said, when I lived to make myself happy, I realized it was for nothing. Everything that Solomon wanted to do, he did it. Everywhere he wanted to go, he went. Whatever he wanted to buy, he bought. Man, look at all the wives he had. And then had 300 side chicks. What? What? Come on with it now. Now he had to be wise. Yes. Yes. I mean, how was he going to figure out a schedule like that? You keep reading, you will find out. He said, I brought them all to my bed. And at the end of it, I hate life. And here is what modern day philosophy teaches us. You only got one life. And live it to the fullest. Do whatever makes you. The problem is we're fickle with our happiness. What makes us happy on Sunday don't work Sunday night. Wait, I'm about to help you with this. And when your happiness or the things that make you happy change that frequently, all you end up is a bunch of regret. Because how many of us did something in a moment and then the next moment wish we hadn't? I wish I had some real folk up in here today who don't act like they've been saved all their life and been walking with Jesus ever since they was in a cradle. I'm trying to tell you, so many of us have made decisions because we got caught up in a moment and made the moment about us and now we're left with regret. Man, look at verse 3. This dude said, with the help of a bottle of wine and all the wisdom I could muster. So he mixed his hypnotic with his intelligence. What? Tell your neighbor, that's toxic. And I'm not talking to everybody. I'm just talking about, I'm talking to the people who done been there. When you have intelligent thoughts and you fool, When you have a bright idea and you fool, yes, yes, yes. I'm going to prophesy to you now. It ain't going to turn out well in the morning. No. He says, chasing pleasure, chasing to please you is nothing but smoke. Ask me why. Because we don't know what really pleases us. And then, watch this, here's another thing. And then we move past trying to please ourselves and then we become people pleasers. The reason we become people pleasers is because we have failed at pleasing ourselves. And so now our joy has been making sure somebody else is happy. Even though they treat you like a dog. Because you're scared of being by yourself. I just hope somebody gets set free right here. 
if you can't please you, you ought to give it up trying to please other people. What you say? You can't live your life trying to make other people happy because then you become their slave. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Come on with And you will give up your career, your future, all behind somebody who told you they love you tonight. Yes. Come on with Give all of that up for a cuff it moment. Somebody got it and somebody didn't. If you don't know what I'm talking about, pray about it and listen to Beyonce. That's all I'm saying. Well, uh, uh, pleasure does not satisfy. Then he says, I got to hurry. He mentions wealth, all the money that he has. He says, I pointed to all the things that I have bought. Yeah. And that didn't make me happy. So guess what he did? He had to buy more stuff. And when that joy wore off, he had to buy more stuff. And then he had to buy more stuff. And then he had to buy more stuff. And now Solomon has a shopping addiction. Oh, it got blessed quietness right over here. Because I get excited about the moment of being able to buy something, and then when I get it, don't even wear it. But I'm still paying on it. I was watching TikTok, and this dude on TikTok, he was blinged out, he was, he looked like he had it going on, and he, he made a statement, he says, people look at me, they think I got it going on. I don't have it going on, I'm just irresponsible. What? Come on now. That sometimes we try to show what we have so that people could value us. Right, right. But can I tell you the truth? You don't need stuff to make you valuable. What makes you valuable is being who God made you. What makes you valuable is that God thought enough about you to get you here. What makes you valuable is that God has put purpose in your life. What makes you valuable is that God loves you unconditionally. What makes you valuable is the blessings that God gives over and over. What makes you valuable is that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only unique son to die on a hill called Calvary for you. So it doesn't matter if somebody tells you you ain't worth nothing. You're worth everything to God. Don't ever judge your worth by the possessions you have. Because that would make you cheap. Because if your value is based on the possessions you have, you will sell it to the highest bidder. Y'all got quiet right there. Yes, we will give our souls, our life, and our future to somebody who pays for it. Let me leave that alone. Let me close. I should have been closed. Here's what Solomon says in closing. He says, don't chase fire. I mean, don't chase smoke. Chase fire. Because if you get fire, God will give you those things you are pursuing. If you honor the Lord with your life, with your possessions, with your wealth, if you honor the Lord with your time, and you honor the Lord through being disciplined. You honor the Lord through working hard. You honor the Lord through being diligent and studying. I'm telling you what God will do. God will add some things to you that you cannot 
God for it. Uh, somebody should have shouted right there. That God has blessed you with blessings you can't afford. That you can't pay for. God has blessed you with stuff that you can't buy in a store. God has given you life. God has given you breath. God has given you purpose. God has given you salvation. God has given you forgiveness. God has given you joy. God has given you peace. God has given you comfort. God has given you whatever you need. So if you don't have the best of everything, and you may feel that you're the least of everybody, come on with it. The shout today is, God gave. Yeah. And in the book of Ecclesiastes, Solomon over and over uses the phrase, God gives. Yeah. That for every moment of smoke you have, God wants to replace it with fire. 